Hi guys, today we're going to talk about something that really is not in your textbook much at all. So it's going to be really important you take good notes on today. So today's topic is something known as colligative properties, which have everything to do with solutions, which is what this chapter is. But here's what colligative properties are. Colligative properties are properties that depend on the number of particles in solution. What I want you to notice is it does not depend on what the solution is made of, it depends on the number of particles. And so this is, this is the key right here. And so as we talk about the number of particles, to kind of introduce this idea, the number of particles depends on two things. It depends on one, the concentration. The more concentrated something is, the more particles are in that solution. That's an I. That looks horrible. <laughs> Must fix. Okay. Um, concentration, yes, very good. Number two, the second thing it, it is dependent upon is something known as I. And what I stands for is the number of particles that a compound breaks into when it's dissolved. So here, here's what that means. If I have, let's say, two different beakers. And in beaker one, I've got some water. In beaker two, I've got some water. And in beaker one, I add some table sugar, C12H22O11. I put it in the water. And so when this table sugar, which is all covalently bonded, dissolves, I have little aqueous sugar molecules. Well, sugar doesn't break up into any particles. So for a covalently bonded compound, I is equal to 1. Now this should be more obvious if I compare, say, ordinary table salt, sodium chloride. If I put sodium chloride into water, ionic compounds dissociate into their ions. So it breaks apart into a sodium ion and a chloride ion. So for sodium chloride, I is 2 because there are two particles that compound breaks into when it's dissolved. You know, you could consider magnesium fluoride. You know, when magnesium fluoride breaks down, it breaks down into a magnesium ion and two fluoride ions. And so for that, I is going to be three. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about number of particles. It depends on the concentration and how many particles that compound breaks into when it's dissolved. There are three separate properties that we're going to look at that deal with colligative properties. The first one, super important. Vapor pressure lowering. The name kind of tells you what happens when we have a solution. So if we were going to compare pure water to a solution of, say, salt water, You know, and let's say for the ease, we've got a, a lid on each one. So a certain number of water molecules evaporate with pure water. But when we have salt water, fewer particles. In fact, the vapor pressure is lower when we have a solution than when we, ha we have the pure solvent. That's the idea behind it. There's something interfering that is causing there to be less vapor pressure. There's some math that goes along with that. Here is the math. Vapor pressure lowering, VPL, is equal to the mole fraction of the solute, we'll call it the solute particles, times the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. Now, mole fraction, we saw, is the number of moles of your substance divided by your total moles. So in this case, our mole fraction of our solute particles will be moles of solute 
particles, so we actually have to account for how many particles, divided by the total moles of particles. All right, we're going to do just a little example. So let's say that we have one mole of sodium chloride dissolved in four moles of water. And I want to know what is the new vapor pressure if the vapor pressure of water at this temperature is equal to 0.2 atmospheres. So what I really want to know is what is the vapor pressure of the solution? I know it's less than this because the vapor pressure is lowered. All right, so vapor pressure lowering. It's equal to the mole fraction of the solute particles. Well, here's something we have to understand. This one mole of sodium chloride is really one mole of Na plus when it dissolves and one mole of Cl minus. The water is covalently bonded, does not break apart at all. So my vapor pressure lowering is equal to the mole fraction of my solute particles. Well, I have two moles of solute particles. That's the one mole of Na plus and the one mole of Cl minus divided by my total moles of particles. Well, I have four moles of water and two moles of these ions. So I have a total of six moles of sol, not sol, sorry, six moles total particles. And that comes from the four water the sodium ion and the chloride ions. That's where that comes from. So my vapor pressure, this is my mole fraction. Now I'm going to make it less messy. Get rid of that. That's just where those came from. Times the vapor pressure of the pure solvent, which is 0.20 atmospheres. And when I do that, I end up Six, whoops, go away. There we go. Whoa, let's do this correctly. Point, sorry, mistake. Point zero six seven atmospheres is what I get. Now, this is not my new vapor pressure. This is my vapor pressure lowering. This is how much my vapor pressure gets lowered. So, my vapor pressure of my solution. I started at 0.2 atmospheres. It's lowered by 0.067, that's supposed to be minus, sorry, atmospheres. And so my new vapor pressure is going to be 0.13 atmospheres. That will be my new vapor pressure. Here's the thing I want you to consider, because this is very much related to our next colligative property, which is boiling about boiling point because since the vapor pressure has to be equal to the pressure of air for boiling and we now lowered the vapor pressure, think about what that means for the boiling temperature. That means we got to get it extra hot for that to happen. So that goes on to the second colligative property and I'm going to actually do two of them together. I'll focus on them one at a time, but you're going to see why, because they're very similar. Number two, boiling point elevation. So since the vapor pressure is lowered, we have to get it extra hot in order to get the pressure of air to equal the vapor pressure, because remember, that's what's true for boiling. So the boiling point ends up getting elevated. So if we have, for example, pure water, the boiling point would be 100 degrees Celsius. But if we have salt water, the boiling point is going to be higher than that because the vapor pressure was lowered. Here's the equation you need to know. 
delta t sub b is equal to k sub b times m times i. Here's what these things mean. And I'll do an example with freezing point, but here's the equation. K sub b is a constant. It's the boiling point elevation constant, which for water, K sub b is equal to 0.52 degrees south Celsius per molal. Molal? See this little m stands for molality. That was one of the, concentr the concentrations that we calculated. Here's where it comes into play, moles per kilogram solvent. And I stands for the number of particles. Now this is very much like vapor pressure lowering. When you compute this, this is not the new boiling temperature. This is the change in the boiling temperature. And since it's boiling point elevation, this always gets added to the original boiling temperature. Now I'll show you the example with the second one, which is very, very similar. And then you'll have a chance to practice. The, the third one, I said second, sorry, is freezing point depression. And freezing point depression is, as the name implies, the fact that if you have pure water, its freezing point is zero degrees Celsius. But if you have salt water, the freezing point, whoa, not that far, the freezing point is less than zero degrees Celsius. So when you add salt to your water, you actually lower the freezing temperature, which is exactly why very recently when we had roads that had ice on them, we put salt on them. Because when the salt dissolved on any liquid water that would form, and then we made a salt solution, it actually lowered the temperature at which it would freeze, and it wasn't able to refreeze as easily. That's why they put salt on the roads. So when it melts into the liquid water, it lowers the freezing point and it can't refreeze. Equation, very much like the last one. Delta T sub F is equal to K sub F times M times I. And K sub F, the freezing point depression constant, this is for water, is 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. This is how much the freezing point is lowered. So as an example, here's the example question. What is the freezing point of a 1.2 molal NaCl solution? You can always assume it's water that it's dissolved in. And I'm going to show you how we can use this. So we use this formula because it's freezing point depression. It's, whoa, go away. <laughs> The freezing point depression, or the change in the freezing point, is 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal times the molality, which is 1.2 molal, times I. Well, this is sodium chloride, so that's two particles. And when I compute that, I get 4.5 degrees Celsius. This number is not the freezing point. This is the change in the freezing point, and since it's freezing point depression, this is how much the freezing point lowers. So we take our freezing temperature and we subtract that change in the freezing temperature. So water normally freezes at zero degrees Celsius, and it's 4.5 degrees lower than that. So our freezing temperature is negative 4.5 degrees Celsius, which is gonna lead us to all sorts of fun problems, which we will do in class.